All right, it's time to start unit two. Uh, so this is all about logical reasoning. This one's going to be entirely different than last unit. So unit one. Unit one was very uh, vocab heavy. It was also very algebra heavy. Um, and this one's going to be very, very little actual algebra and math. It's going to be way more actually writing sentences. Um, logical reasoning is all about deduction and being able to figure stuff out and problem solve. Uh, if it's not a surprise yet, this is by far my favorite chapter um, because we get to play lots of activities. We get to do lots of problem solving stuff just to really build those skills and to practice those skills. Um, so, so we're gonna do the logical reasoning. It's actually a very, very short uh, unit. So make sure to check Schoology for the schedule and kind of when your next test is and everything like that. But let's get started with inductive reasoning. All right, 2.1 inductive reasoning. So, it's sometimes called inductive logic, and it's a process to make a generalization or rule based on a few recurring patterns or observations. So, Robin has just gotten a job at the mechanics as the mechanics apprentice. Her first job is to rotate the tires. The first three lug nuts come off when rotating counterclockwise. So, what's her conjecture? And remember, conjecture is just kind of like a rule uh, based on some evidence. So if the first lug nut came off when rotating counterclockwise, and then the second one did the same thing, and the third one did the same thing, then she can make kind of a, a broad statement based on her research that all lug nuts come off when rotating counterclockwise. So remember, conjecture is kind of a, a rule based on a couple observations or a broad statement. So is this a good example of inductive reasoning? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because we know that the first one did it, the second one did it, the third one did it, so she's making a logical conclusion based on the evidence and the, the research that she's put into it. Uh, what counterexample would disprove her conjecture? And you can kind of go two different ways um, with this. So we can say if a lug nut comes off when rotating clockwise, um, that would definitely uh, be an issue. Um, and then one more way we can kind of say it. Uh, so the other option would kind of be a lug nut just doesn't come off. Um, so does not come off when we're rotating it counterclockwise. So both of those would, would disprove her conjecture and say that, okay, so yes, you definitely observed that, came to that conclusion, uh, but just because it happened to those three, it's not going to happen to all of them. So that's an invalid conjecture that, that she made. Question number two, all about Wile E. Coyote. Um, and I invite you to watch uh, some Wile E. Coyote um, in preparation for this question if you need to. Uh, maybe I'll even link a video for you. Um, but anyways, Wile E. Coyote is setting up a trap for the Roadrunner. Every previous trap has destroyed some part of his body. However, after he blows himself up, he seems to be healed by the next scene. So what are two possible conjectures that we can make here? Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can come up with anything, and write them down. All right, so the two things is, uh, if every previous trap has destroyed some part of his body, then we can make a conjecture that says this trap that he's creating right now will destroy part of his body. And the same thing here. However, after he blows himself up, he seems to be healed by the next scene. So we can make a conjecture that Wally Coyote will always be healed by the next scene. So is this a good example of inductive reasoning? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are taking the information that we have. Uh, we're seeing repeated results that all are the same result. And then we're making a, a rule, a conjecture, a broad statement based on all of those results. Uh, what counterexample would disprove your conjecture? Uh, once again, go ahead and pause the video. All right, so then your answer for this, um, I'm not going to write this down, but if you just look at number A, it would be something that doesn't happen with that, right? So it would be uh, the trap not destroying part of his body, um, or it could be Wile E. Coyote not being healed by the next scene. So something, some repeated results we've always seen, and then that not being true. All right, and last one here, number three. Ralphie noticed that of the last four days, he ate bacon for breakfast, that Lisa ran away from him. Ralphie concluded that if he had cereal for breakfast, then Lisa would not run from him. So, is this a good example of inductive reasoning? Uh, why or why not? 
and then what would be a good conjecture for this. So once again, go ahead and pause the video, and when you come back, you will uh, see this. All right, so no, this is not a good example of inductive reasoning. Um, there's too many factors at play here, right? Ralphie noticed that of the last four days, he ate bacon for breakfast, Lisa ran from him. Um, so he's saying that, oh, that if I eat cereal, then she won't run from me. Um, and that's not, not a great use of inductive reasoning, um, right? The bacon might not be the issue. Uh, the bacon also might be the issue. So maybe this, this could end up being a, a true thing. Um, but it could just be that um, there's other reasons that Lisa is running away from Ralphie. Um, it could be a game that they're playing and Lisa will always run from him. Um, in past years, uh, students have said that maybe Ralphie and Lisa are dogs um, and whatnot. And that's just kind of like how they play and what they do. Um, so there's so much going on here that that's not a good example of inductive reasoning. Um, you can make a conjecture though if you want based on this information. Um, so you can kind of go with the straightforward approach that uh, if Ralphie eats bacon, then Lisa will run from him. Um, or you can go more and say when Ralphie doesn't eat bacon, um, that Lisa won't run away from him or, or some sort of conjecture there. Go ahead and write that down uh, if you don't have one yet. Okay, so now we're kind of going to use inductive reasoning a little bit to help us solve some problems here. So uh, we have a, a series of numbers. So based on the pattern and the repetitive pattern you see, can you come up with the next two terms and can you state the rule? So for this first one, I see 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. So we're going to kind of try and see what we're doing each time. Uh, so here I can see that I added 2. Here I can see I added 3. From here to here I added 4. And from here to here I added 5. Um, so the next two patterns would mean I need to add 6 and then take that and add 7. So 15 plus 6 is going to be 21 and 21 plus 7 is going to be 28. So the next two numbers in the sequence are 21 and 28. And then we want to state the rule here and you can state the rule in terms of words or in terms of math. Um, I'll do it in terms of words here and we want to add one more each time. So the first time I added two, and then I want to add one more, so I add three, I add four, and so on. Uh, go ahead and try B on your own. All right, so my next two numbers are going to be 36 and 49, and this time I wrote the rule in terms of math. Um, it's going to be n squared, where n is the number in the sequence. So my first number is 1, so 1 squared is 1. Then my second number, so 2 squared, 4. My third number, 3 squared is 9. 4 squared, 5 squared. So then my next two numbers are going to be 6 squared, which is 36, and 7 squared, which is 49. All right, go ahead. Create your own inductive reasoning sequence. Um, and then if you want to ask a a friend or a family member or something like that to see if they can figure it out um, if you are watching this video at home. And then I'm just going to move on to the next one. All right, so find the next image in the pattern. Uh, once again, go ahead and use inductive reasoning. So based on what you see so far, make a conclusion, see if you can find the next figure. Um, and go ahead and do both of them. Uh, I'll pa or pause the video. When you come back, you will see the answer. All right, so here are the answers. So number six, uh, we have a three-sided shape, a four-sided shape, a five-sided shape, and they're all regular. Um, if you don't know what regular means, we will actually talk about that uh, next semester. Um, so then we're gonna have a six-sided shape here, uh, which is called a hexagon. And then for B, uh, you can see we're adding the green each time here. So we're gonna add an extra column of three uh, right here. And we'll add one extra on top here as well. So this should be six squares tall, um, and this should be eight squares tall here. All right, counterexamples are used to prove conjectures false. Uh, and all you need is one counterexample, and then the conjecture is false. So it doesn't even matter if there's a hundred things that prove it correct. As long as you have one way to prove it false, then the whole conjecture itself is false. 
So, can you think of counterexamples for the following statements? All animals are monkeys. So, can you think of an animal that is still an animal but would not be a monkey? Uh, and hopefully there's lots of answers here. Uh, we could say a frog. Right, I proved this first part true, I have an animal, and I proved the second part false, right? All frogs are not monkeys. All right, go ahead, see if you can do the other three problems there. Go ahead, pause the video, and when you come back, you'll see answers to all three of those. All right, so number two, students only play games on their phone. So once again, can we come up with a way to make the first part true? So students only play games. Okay, cool. Yeah, on the computer. So when students play games on the computer, then they're not on their phone. So I've proven the first part true, that they play games, but the second part false. It's not only on their phones. They could also play on the computer. All prime numbers are even. So can I think of a prime number that is not odd? And two would be your only example there. So if you remember what a prime number is, um, great. It's a number that can only be multiplied by one in itself. So like two is a prime number because you can multiply one times two. There's no other way of multiplying whole numbers to get two. Uh, for example, six is not prime because one times six, but then you can also do two times three. So uh, for a prime number here too, right? This is actually a true conjecture for every single number out there, except for two, right? All prime numbers are odd except for two, but because I have at least one counterexample, then that conjecture is false. And letter D, all math teachers are nerds. Um, if you use me as your counterexample, that it's incorrect. I am most definitely a, a nerd, um, but I'm sure you probably know or have had a math teacher out there that is not a nerd. Uh, Ms. Spurley is another math teacher here at the school. Uh, she's a lot of fun, but she is definitely not a nerd uh, when it comes to uh, that at all. So uh, that is inductive reasoning. Uh, once again, just kind of a summation. You are making a rule based on a pattern of events or something that keeps repeatedly happening. Um, so that is inductive reasoning.